we have got a bunch of champion buffs for this patch, only one champ being nerfed, and a few item changes that could really shake up the meta. How's it going, everyone? My name is Sean, and I'm going to be on the mic for this one while Dan is away on vacation. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down every single change for patch 14.16 and providing you guys with a complete update on the solo queue tier list for every single role. And are you sick and tired of losing games from bad teammates? Well, at Skill Capped, we turn those frustrating losses into satisfying wins. Take our brand new Season 14 courses that teach you the secrets to winning as a top laner, jungler, mid laner, AD carry, and support. Then pair that with our other new courses on how to counter OP top and mid laners, master your jungle clears, or check out our new Bronze to Diamond series. We even have new Season 14 courses on macro, wave control, trading, Settings and hotkeys, CSing, vision, mechanics, low elo mistakes. Oh, oh, and the list goes on. Then head on over to our Smurf commentary section and simply select the champion that you want to master and get guides from challenger experts teaching you how to play your champion in the exact rank that you are stuck in. You're even guaranteed to have all your questions answered by that very same challenger expert. Our service really does work. That's why we offer a rank up guarantee. If you don't rank up while actively using skill cap, you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below right now to get the rank that you have always dreamed of. V1 change that could completely shift the meta all by itself is this buff to Black Cleaver. Riot has stated that you'll no longer require 0.01 seconds between applying each stack of Black Cleaver's passive. So what does this actually mean though? Well, for an item like Blade of the Ruined King that has on-hit damage, you're going to apply that on-hit damage combined with your regular auto-attack damage at the exact same time. Now, in previous patches, when auto-attacking with Blade of the Ruined King, you would only get one stack of Black Cleaver, but now the on-hit damage coming out of the Blade of the Ruined King is going to apply a second stack for you. Now, in theory, this buff should work with Alawi's tentacles, but when testing on the PvE, it didn't seem to be the case. We were thinking that since if Alawi has multiple tentacles spawned around her and they all slam an enemy at once, that she would now gain a stack of Black Cleaver for each tentacle slam, but it's still looking like she only gets one stack. This is just the PvE though, and maybe it's bugged right now, so we really don't know for sure how impactful this buff really is until it hits live servers. All in all, the buff does have the potential to really add a lot of strength to many champions, but it all depends on who actually benefits from it as you'd think Alawi would be the big winner of it, but then the PBE is saying otherwise. So stay tuned for our mid-patch tier list update next week because that's where we're going to have any updates on which champs are best with the item once we see the buffs on live servers. A nerf to Dorian's Blade is penciled in for this patch as you're going to be losing 20 health and 0.5% lifesteal. That's a nerf across the board to the ADCs and a bunch of fighters as well. We've been seeing ADCs pop up a ton in pro play and solo lanes, so this nerf is a likely being issued to try and combat that strategy. The change shouldn't really affect the bot lane meta too much, but it will give aggro duo lanes the slightest of more kill threat early on. This will also indirectly put more priority on Doran's shield for certain champions. The nerf probably isn't enough to the point where we see Doran's blade completely dropped and the longsword start making a comeback, but we'll have to monitor once we play the changes on live servers. Blade of the Ruined King is actually getting hit with a pretty decent nerf for this patch, as the AD is going down from 55 to 50, attack speed is being lowered by 5%, while melee on hit damage is up from 9 to 10%. With Blade of the Ruined King and Doran's Blade nerfed, Riot is really seeming to want to get rid of Lucian mid from pro. Vayne, Callista, Twitch, Kog'Maw, and Varus are a few other ranged characters that have prioritized Blade in recent patches, so they're the ones that are going to be feeling the nerfs the most. Riot's going to be issuing some changes to Death Timers and Death Home Guards for this patch. From levels 1 to 8, Death Timers are being increased by 4 seconds, and at level 9, Death Timer is up by 2 seconds, and from level 10 onwards, there's going to be no change at all. You're going to be getting back to lane a little bit faster though after dying, as the duration of Death Home Guards is going up from 5 to 8 seconds. The timer on your home guards is now going to start when you leave the fountain instead of instantly after spawning, so you won't be punished as much if you take some extra time to purchase items. Alright, that's all we've got for the system changes this patch, so let's move on to looking at the top lane. Wukong is going to be buffed up as he's getting more armor from his passive, and E attack speed is going to be increased by 5% at 
all ranks. Wukong really hasn't been in that bad of a spot for solo queue lately. He's just been extremely underplayed, we think, so these buffs should bring some light back to the champ. Wukong has actually had a positive win rate against Aatrox and Darius recently, who are two of the most played tops in the solo queue meta. Definitely don't sleep on the Monkey King for this patch, as he's being placed in the top lane S tier as a very underrated pickup. So, Wukong is the only conventional top lane champ who's buffed for this patch, so let's jump right into the tier list. OP tier is going to stay the same as where we've had it for a while now, with Set and Volley locking down the spots. There is potential for the top lane meta to actually see a decent shakeup, though, due to the Black Cleaver buffs. Now, as we mentioned earlier on in the video, though, it's really unclear right now from testing on the PBE just how impactful the buffs will actually be, so we'll have to see the changes on live servers before we make any major adjustments to the tier list. Elawi is one champ who, in theory, should see a nice boost in power this patch if the Black Cleaver buffs work the way that we think they should. Someone like Pantheon or Renekton, who can build Blade of the Rude King with Black Cleaver, could also benefit from the Cleaver buffs as well. Now, Skarner is being changed for this patch as well, but the changes do seem pretty underwhelming once again, so he won't be moving up the tier list for now. We'll have to see just how impactful the Blade of the Ruin King changes land for someone like Irelia, as it is her staple rush item. It's probably going to be pretty neutral for melee champs, because even with the AD and attack speed dropping just a bit, you're getting more on hit damage, which should help to even things out. Let's move on to the jungle changes now, and similar to top lane, it's a pretty light patch for the role. Vi is going to receive a small buff to her Q damage, as it's going up by 10 at all ranks. We'll have to see if the Black Cleaver buff synergize with Vi, because in theory, she should now gain two Black Cleaver stacks instantly when she uses her E. Vi's been a pretty poor analytical performer in recent patches, just hovering around a 48% win rate, so even with these buffs, we don't see her gaining that much priority, and she's going to be left in the B tier for now. If Black Cleaver changes do actually end up being quite impactful for Vi, then we're definitely going to move her up for the mid-patch tier list, but we don't want to jump the gun until we actually see if Cleaver is even any better for her. Well, so much for the Skarner rework, as the champion has now dropped below a 1% play rate for solo queue. It's at 0.6% to be exact, which is just not a good look for a recently reworked champ. Riot's going to be giving him a few more buffs for this patch to try and resolve that, as his health is up from 610 to 630. Base AD is being increased from 60 to 63. Q bonus AD ratio is going up as well from 60 to 80%. It's really just the base AD and base health buffs that even really matter here, as you don't even build any bonus AD on Skarner in the first place, so Q buff is honestly irrelevant. If they actually buff the health scaling back up on Q damage, then we'd have a different conversation, but we really don't see the base stat changes being enough to send Skarner significantly back up the tier list. Base AD change will help with his clear though, and 3 AD is nothing to scoff at, so we're going to adjust Skarner up just one tier going from C into B. So looking at the jungle tier list now, we can expect for the upper echelon to remain the same for yet another patch. OP tier is not going to be changing, as we've got Nocturne, Lilia, and Shivana as the top three. Originally, it was looking like Riot was going to issue nerfs to Leandris, but then they scrapped those, so champs like Lilia, Shivana, Amumu, and Udir, who are all really good Leandris users, get to thrive for yet another patch. Briar is one jungler who has the potential to see a nice boost in strength for this patch if the Black Cleaver buff synergizes with Blade of the Ruined King, how we think it will. Basically, you should now get two stacks of Cleaver for every auto attack you land, as long as you have both items and with Briar's meta build being a Blade Rush into Cleaver second, definitely keep an eye on her for 14.16. We've got Briar in the S tier right now, but she could very easily jump up into OP if the Cleaver buff is impactful. Mid is once again the role with the most amount of changes, so let's break them all down for you. Azir is first in line for a few buffs as his health regen is going up from 3.5 to 5, while armor is being increased from 22 to 25. Buff is definitely more pro skewed here as Riot's trying to give Azir some added viability into the AD mids that we're seeing more commonly in pro than in solo queue. We don't really expect for these buffs to result in a whole lot of strength gain for solo queue, so we're going to be leaving Azir in the C tier. A buff that should be a little bit more impactful for solo queue, though, and moving up the mid lane tier list as a result is going to be Syndra. Syndra is getting more damage on her R as damage per sphere is up by 10 at all ranks. For a spell that's point and click, this guaranteed added damage is going to be really, really nice. Now, nothing meta breaking, but we will be giving Syndra a push out of B and into A tier for 14.6. 
16. After dominating the latter end of Season 13, Oriana has been on the weaker side for most of Season 14, so Riot's buffing her again in 14.16. QAP ratio is going to be going up from 50 to 55%. Now, on paper, this change really doesn't seem that impactful, but we do have to take into account that Ori Q is on a very short cooldown. So if you're able to use the spell multiple times in a fight, an added 5% on each use is really going to add up. Is the change actually enough to move Oriana up the tier list, though? Mm, well, we're leaning more towards it missing the mark just slightly, but if the change does land more impactful, we will push Ori up for the mid-patch tier list. Silas ends up losing more strength than Riot had hoped from their 14.15 adjustments, so they're going to be giving him some power back for 14.16. Base health is going up from 575 to 600. AP ratio for passive damage on the primary target is being increased from 25 to 30 percent. W base damage is getting buffed as well, going up by 10 at all ranks. Some pretty nice buffs all around here, and we should see Silas back in a good spot for 14.16, so we're moving him from B into A tier. Riot has these Katarina changes listed as buffs, but we're really not expecting too much out of them. The only spell that is actually getting buffed here is Cat's Q, as the base damage and AP ratio are going up. E is being nerfed, however, as you're going to lose 20 damage at max rank. R on hit effectiveness is dropping as well from 30 scaling to 40% to 25 scaling to 35%. This R change is really going to lessen the power of a Blade of the Ruined King rush for Cat, which has been the most popular item on her as of recent. Now, in theory, AP builds should gain in priority, but AP builds overall have been heavily underperforming in recent patches, so even if that's the case, we don't see Cat actually gaining very much relative strength here. We are leaning towards the changes being more neutral than anything, so we're not going to be moving Cat up the tier list for now, as she's going to remain in the B tier. Kiana is going to be adjusted this patch with some buffs and some nerfs sprinkled in. Base armor is getting buffed as it's going from 28 to 31. Q damage is going to be buffed at rank 1, but the base is lower at max rank. The AD ratio on Q is being increased, though, from 75 to 90%. W base damage is getting nerfed, dropping from 8 scaling to 64 to 8 scaling to 40. R AD ratio is massively nerfed, dropping from 1.75 to 1.25. So even though Q damage is going up here, you're losing damage on W and R, so if you're looking to full combo burst an enemy with one rotation, you probably have less damage for this patch. In the more drawn out skirmishes though, where you're able to use Q multiple times, that's where these changes are really going to end up net positive. A lot of Kiana's solo Q power comes from being able to just one shot enemies with her full combo though, so it's really tough to say whether she's going to be better or worse off due to these adjustments. We've had Kiana in the mid lane A tier for a while now, and that's where we're going to be leaving her for now, until we get a look at how the changes transpire when they hit the live servers. There's just one champion getting directly nerfed for this patch, and it's Corky. Corky has continued to be heavily prioritized in pro play as of late, so Riot's doing what they can to try and change that. Solo Q Corky's gonna have to suffer even more as a result though, as he's been hovering around a 47% win rate for a while, and that's obviously just gonna drop lower for 14.16. The nerfs being issued are to Corky's Q, as the cooldown is going up by one second at all ranks, and the mana cost is being increased from 60 scaling to 80 to just 80 flat. So mainly targeting the early laning power of Corky with these nerfs, and we do have to take into account he's also going to be losing even more early game strength due to the Doran's blade nerfs. Early game is where Corky should be most exploitable, and that just hasn't really been the case at least in pro play as of late, so these nerfs should push him towards a more vulnerable early game state. And for Corky's tier list placement, we would definitely advise you to stay away from him for solo queue, as he's going to continue to be placed in the C tier. So even with all these mid laners getting changed for this patch, we really don't expect the meta to look that much different. OP tier is still going to consist of Vex and Nefiri, as they're going to continue to be really strong carries for the current solo queue meta. Yasuo and Yon are being moved down one tier for 14.16, because they're being negatively influenced by the Doran's Blade and Blade of the Ruined King nerfs. ADCs played in mid lane have already been pretty terrible solo queue champs in recent patches, so picks like Lucian, Trist, Ezreal, Corky, and 
and Zeri are all going to become even weaker due to the Dorian's blade nerfs. Lucian especially because he's someone who runs Blade of the Ruined King, so he's negatively influenced by those item nerfs as well, and he's also getting directly nerfed for mid. So, moving on to ADC now. Let's have a look at how Riot's changing Lucian for this patch. Q damage is going to be nerfed as it's dropping by 10 at each rank. Passive total AD ratio, however, is up from 15 to 20%. Now, to be clear, this is the part of the passive where you gain bonus damage after your ally has healed or shielded you. So definitely a nerf to the laning strength of mid lane Lucian, while bot lane will still be hurting, but really not as bad. Bot lane Lucian will end up losing some power from these changes because the Q nerf always hurts, regardless of matchup, while the passive buff doesn't actually come into effect until you're laning with a support who can shield or heal you. So for example, if you're playing with someone like Leona, passive buff honestly doesn't even matter. So, we're going to be dropping Lucian down the ADC tier list for 14.16, going from A into B tier. So, Lucian is the only ADC that's being adjusted for this patch, which means the meta for the role is going to look very similar to last patch. OP tier is going to be locked down by Misfortune and Jin. Doran's blade nerfs will hurt the role as a whole, but the changes likely aren't enough to where we see a meta shift with starting items. Now, if we're wrong here and Doran's blade priority does drop for this patch, then we're going to be sure to update you in the mid-patch tier list. Twitch, Kog'Maw, Callista, Vayne, and Varus will be a few ADCs to keep an eye on for this patch due to the Blade of the Ruined King nerfs. Twitch and Kog are the only two who have actually been performing pretty well in solo queue, so the nerfs are just going to make Callista and Varus even worse C tier picks. We have just one support being adjusted for this patch, and it's going to be Senna. What Riot's looking to do is to push the champ even further towards her support identity and away from being played in the carry role. They're doing this by reducing the attack speed growth from 4 to 2%, crit per 20 passive stacks is going from 10 to 8%, W root duration is going to be going up by 0.25 seconds, Q heal base value is going up at max rank, the bonus AD ratio is also going up, AP ratio sees a huge boost going from 40 to 80%, while the lethality scaling on Q heal is being totally removed. Q slow ratio is being adjusted as the bonus AD scaling and AP scaling are going up, our shield is getting buffed as the base value, AP ratio, and mist scaling are all up. So, as we can see by these changes here, Riot's really leaning into buffing the utility portions of Senna's kit, being heals, shields, and CC, while nerfing her damage output by targeting attack speed and crit scaling. These should be net positive changes for support Senna, but to what extent is honestly too hard to predict here. Senna has been down in the support B tier for a while, so we're going to be moving her into the A tier, and then we're going to reassess if we need to for the bin patch tier list. Minimal movement on the tier list has been a common theme for this patch for pretty much every single role, and support is going to follow suit. Poppy, Nami, and Seraphine are who you're going to want to prioritize the most right now, as we've got them in the OP tier. There's honestly just so many great support champs that you can choose from right now, as the meta has finally found itself in a relatively balanced state. Who knows? Seraphine has become that one outlier, though, who does seem to be pushing away from the rest of the pack, though. High elo supports are really spamming her a ton right now, and she's performing very well in the lower ranks, too. For some reason, a lot of lower elo Seraphine players are building Blackfire Torch on her, though. So if you haven't tried the new build of Solstice Slay, Echoes of Helia, and Moonstone, you're missing out. Okay, guys, one last thing. Our rank up guarantee is absolutely insane. It's kind of like signing up for the gym and then just getting a re fund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill capped. We obsess over making the best guides with the top players, the rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb as easy as possible. If you're ready to level up, just visit skillcap.com and literally see the difference. So there you have it, guys. Definitely one of the lesser impact patches that we've seen in a while for solo queue, as a lot of the changes were more targeted towards addressing issues in pro play. Nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you back next week for our mid-patch tier list update.